Hey indie game fans, relative to this month, April 2019 really had quite a number of great indie games, so while there is a lull in new releases leading up to E3, perhaps go back and check out some of these. As always, we will start with some quick picks worth checking out, but before that, I have a very special guest for you guys, introducing Josh from Indie Former. Hey indie game fans, this is Josh and my pick of the month is Superland, which is a mix of Portal, Zelda and Metroid. Somewhat of an open world, you're bound to a 9 meters squared world, so I guess you could say that this is a sandbox. It's primarily a lateral thinking puzzle game, but there's a few extra ingredients in the pot. Combat, monsters and abilities, plus every nook and cranny has something for you to find. If you're on the fence, play the demo. It gives you more than enough time to think it through and get a feel for the game. You will not be disappointed. Thanks Clemmy for having me be a part of this video and our collaboration. If you've got Superland, or even tried the demo, let us know your thoughts down below. Yuppie Psycho is a horror game where you play as a fresh employee who has the unenviable task of having to kill the witch that made the company as prominent as it has been. The body horror is very gross and disturbing, so if you like to be scared, check this one out. Career of the Crypts is an atmospheric puzzle adventure game where you are trapped in the crypts. The torch and lighting is a central mechanic, and the foreboding atmosphere created is very, very good. Great pixel art as well. Fell Seal Arbiter's Mark is a turn-based tactics game which has drawn many comparisons to Final Fantasy Tactics. Great story campaign with over 30 classes and 300 abilities, this should scratch that tactics itch. Mod Howl is a first-person medieval combat game that draws inspiration from 2012's Chivalry Medieval Warfare. Seven years seems like such a long time, but this takes the formula and adds more modern takes on it, such as a battle royale mode. The physics and first-person combat is realistic and has led to many, many GIFs and videos and overall seems like such a great time. Interestingly, the term Mod Howl itself, according to Wikipedia, it's a technique of holding the sword inverted, allowing you to use it as a mace, and this is used to surprise opponents in melee combat, pretty emblematic of the chaos expected in this game. Moving on, here are the top 5 best indie games for April 2019. <laughs> The time manipulation, Hotline Miami but 2D platformer, Katana Zero, has had an excellent reception where you play as an assassin for hire with some lapses in your memory. With the help of a therapist, you seek to uncover bits of your past, but the core gameplay itself is fast and frantic.
I love the pixel arts in this, having already featured it a couple of times, and the way that the storytelling unfolds is very interesting. Fantastic overall package. Hey there, I'm Friedemann from Grizzly Games, and this is our new game Islanders. We want to make sure you can make an informed decision on whether it's the right game for you. So here is a quick summary of how Islanders works. At its core, it's a minimalist strategy game about building cities on beautiful islands. Building something in Islanders doesn't cost any resources. Instead, you have an inventory with a limited amount of buildings in it. When you build something, you earn points depending on what surrounds it. For example, this lumberjack gets points for every tree and sawmill within its radius. Once you've earned enough points, you unlock new building options and your inventory gets refilled. Islanders is a minimalist city builder which is very pleasant and chill. I really love the low poly look and tackling the challenge of building cities in different biomes is quite fun. The islands are procedurally generated giving you a new challenge each time, and it is great for kicking back and playing a little bit every night. In the beginning this is really simple, but as your cities grow bigger, this mechanic offers a lot of room for different optimizations and strategies. When you reach a certain amount of points, the new island button in the right hand corner unlocks. It allows you to travel to new lands and start your next, even bigger city. All islands are procedurally generated, so there's a vast variety for you to explore. They range from snowy mountainscapes to hot deserts and small archipelagos and they all provide different gameplay challenges for you. If you run out of buildings before unlocking the next island, the game's over and your high score gets uploaded. At this point you can ride off into the sunset or take a proud last look at what you've built and start the next round. And that's it! With Islanders, we want to offer you a relaxing and intuitive way of building beautiful cities in no time at all. Please keep in mind that it does not offer the same amount of depth and late game features as other, more complex city builders. Instead, we hope that Islanders is one of those beautiful, relaxing experiences that you can come back to every once in a while, at what we think is a very fair price. Thanks, and see you around. For as long as we could remember, this is how it has always been. Devotion is taught through suffering. Drawn to the divine light like moths, sinners will relentlessly advance. The souls like Duck Devotion, much like last year's Death's Gambit, as a pixel art action game featuring intricately detailed levels and layouts, a weighty combat system, and a narratively rich world to explore.
As always, I'm a huge fan of the pixel art here, which, combined with the sheer atmosphere created, is a real treat. Hey there, friend. Looking for treasure? You're going about it the wrong way. In this strange, unreasonable land of ours, everything is treasure. Flowers, trees, chickens, yes, even the rocks beneath your feet. You'll want to keep anything and everything you find. Even the most mundane of objects can hold valuable secrets. Nice find, friend. But watch out! Some less patient characters may find themselves overtaken with jealousy. Ah, hard at work, I see. Beautiful! You know what to do with that, don't you? Drop it in the ocean! That's right! Sacrifice the fruits of your labor to the cold, unfeeling depths and be grandly rewarded. Go on now! Looks like you're well on your way, friend. Good luck to you, and happy foraging! If you guys watched the video on Indieformer, you will know that Forager is one of my top picks for the month. A Minecraft or Terraria-style resource gathering and crafting game, Forager simplifies many of the systems and adds in a very compelling progression system that sees you unlocking new skills and Zelda-style dungeons as you progress. The gameplay loop is very compelling, so much so that I have to give fair warning that this straight up consumed a week of my life and I had to see it through to 100% completion. The cool thing about this game is that while it was pretty satisfying to complete, there is a roadmap of content up till 2020, adding more game modes, weather effects, multiplayer, improved combat and so on, so something to look forward to. With the disclaimer that I did a paid promotion for the game, One Finger Death Punch 2 is a sequel to 2014's game of the same name, and, as is expected of sequels, is bigger and better while retaining much of what made the original great. A two-button rhythm action game where you have to take out Stickman, this has insanely fast action, good punchy feeling combat, and just an overall sense of style. I love the lightsaber levels in particular, but with multiple levels, an extensive progression system, and to be chasing that 5 star rating on each level, this takes the number 1 spot of the month. 
For more of the best indie games, do check out the previous video or click on the recommended playlist and I will see you after the jump.